I'm going to feel better when Joan gets on the step. Oh. We have Joan Hunter with us, and if you need supernatural provision, you need to stay tuned. Call people up and tell them to come to the television set. There is truth, and you're going to be set free. And you can even call in, and we'd be happy to pray with you. But you know, now we want to take the gospel to the streets, and Joan wants to take this message to, to the streets. To the world, that's right, everywhere. Well, Joan, it's so good to have you. Yes. It's so good to be back. Bless you. Just love yes. you guys. You know, love you too. I was just sitting here thinking of your mom and dad, and I always knew them as the happy hunters. Mm hmm. Yeah. And do you realize how happy she is now? Mom and Dad <laughs> are so happy right now, walking the streets of gold. So, uh, yes, they're just, they're they both are. with the Lord, and they've been there. Uh, Mom's been gone about almost three years, and Dad's <sighs> been gone almost two. So, yeah. But they're, they're happier than they've ever been. Mm. They're the true <laughs> happy hunters. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to talk about supernatural provision. And I know there is so many people preaching this um, gospel that you just have what you ask for. You just take it and name it. God gives it, claim it, name it, or name it and claim it. And, uh, but I think Joan has got a new angle and truth in the manner of supernatural provision. That's right. Don't you, Joan? I believe it. And uh, <laughs> the Word says that He's going to reveal the secrets of heaven. And I believe that there are more secrets in heaven that are being revealed, what we would also term as revelation knowledge, that's coming to, uh, to us now. And I might be sharing some, so another evangelist, teacher, pastor might be sharing some, but God is revealing many, many secrets of heaven. And some people go, well, that, I, I don't, I'm not into that kind of thing. Well, you know what? You need to think about it because God is, is he's new every day, yet he never changes. And it's kind of one of those oxymoron statements, but he's wanting to give us a greater insight. And the main thing, if nothing else out of today's program, is that people need to line up with the word, not the world. And so many people are lining up with the world and what they're watching and hearing on most television programs and news uh, broadcasts. They're hearing incredible death to their finances, death yes. to their home, death, death to the value of their home, death to their jobs, etc. And so what's happening is people are walking in that fear because faith comes by hearing. But faith comes by hearing the positive. Fear comes yes. by hearing the negative. And with the more you hear it, the more you are engrossed in whatever you're hearing, uh, whether good or bad. And so I want to really encourage people to, to not listen to the news or even read too much of the news. Be aware of what's going on. But don't saturate yourself in the news because it will consume you. And whatever comes in here goes into your heart, goes into your spirit, goes into your thinking. Well, I need to cut back on donating to this network because if I give, then I'm not going to have enough money. So what it does is it instills fear when God wants to instill faith. And let's just give and watch God multiply the finances that he wants to, to bless us with. Amen. Well, you I, said, go ahead. Well, I know that. Your parents were great givers. You're a great giver. And you, God is. Yeah, that's yes. Harry, exactly there, what I was going to say. To be more godly is to be a radical giver. Yes. You know, to be more like God. And I want to be like God. 
And I want to be, and I am a radical giver. We, my husband and I gave away probably 30, we haven't done our income taxes yet this year, but uh, 30 to 40 percent of our income, minimum of 30, mm-hmm. and, 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 and done fine. And, you know, and, and it's just like, you know, less taxes you get to pay and different things like that. But praise God, you get to pay taxes. You got money to pay tax mm-hmm. on. But what God wants to do is he wants to just take the limits off of the 10 percent. You know, or I'm going to give 11 percent or 12 percent. You know, you just give as God tells you to give. You will walk in incredible financial freedom. You know, a lot of people ask me about the tithe. Well, what do you think about the tithe? Well, you know, I don't, you know, I like people say, well, I don't believe in the tithe. Well, I don't believe in the tithe. I believe in God. So you got to believe in God and then you do what God tells you to do. You know, they say, well, it was before the law, after the law, during the law, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, whatever. Just get rid of the point that you have to tithe. You know, you don't have to tithe anymore. It's just you get to. And you don't have to give 10%. Why stick with 10%? Right. You know, the ministry and us personally give more than 10% away. And, and that's just the bare minimum. And when people really grasp that, you, and it's, it's incomprehensible, that you'll actually have more after you tithe than before you tithe. It doesn't make sense, but it's one of those things that you've seen proven in your own lives through the years and how God will make up the difference where there is no way, right. whether, you know, bless you with food, bless you with this, you know, some, you know, check comes in the mail, you know, somebody gives you a Pentecostal handshake, gives you some finances, you know, or whatever it is. God wants to pour out the blessings that you can't even contain. That's Amen. right. We've seen that with CTN. Oh, definitely. I mean, supernatural mm-hmm. provision. Through the with, years with we've the great seen awakening, that. Yes. Because for three hours for an entire year, prime time, there was no mention of money. Right. And there was never an offering taken, nothing sold. And yet Bob would walk into the CFO's office and he'd say, God is providing. This is really something else. And, and the thing is, it's like in the natural, that was not wisdom. Okay. Right. I mean, you know, in a business sense, it was not wisdom to do that. But in God's sense, it is. And when you do what God tells you to do, he will more than make up the difference. Amen. And you sowed into millions of people giving their lives to the Lord. That's right. And there is no, that's priceless. That's right. But what has happened is that God saw your need. He saw your seed and he blessed that and he multiplied that. And, and not to mention the fact that, you know, not just what happened over there is, is reaping in that, but you're a joint heir in all that went on over there. Right. Because you actually supported that going around the world, which opened it up for millions more people to, to get saved. And, and I want to really encourage you to really pray about being a regular partner with CTN, because right here is, is a place where you can seed, where miracles are happening. And when you seed into a ministry where miracles are happening, miracles are going to happen in your finances. It's a given. Amen. And it is proven again and again and again how God wants to bless you. <clears throat> but you need to be sensitive to him where God tells you to give your seed. Mm. Because it's, if you put it in nasty, dry up ground, nothing's going to happen. But you put it into rich soil like that's here, blessings are going to just overtake you. And the, the harvest is going to be massive. You know, good. I was thinking the, the money that you <coughs> want to give. Don't hold back and say, fear, I'm giving it. And, and write to us and tell us, I'm giving out of fear. I'm not giving out of faith. Now, everyone says give out of faith, but you can give out of fear. You may not understand it, but you can give out of fear. Well, I'm fearful I won't have food. I'm fearful of this. I'm fearful. Give to get out of fear. Yeah, Hallelujah. Joyce, Joyce says, That's do it exactly afraid. right. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> do, do it afraid. afraid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. If, and, and whatever it is, it's keeping you from doing it. Fear, and in particular, fear of lack. The word says that my God's going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. The word does not say my God's going to supply all of my riches, all of my need according to my job. That's which right. that's what right. people look at. The words that he's going to supply all of your needs. Well, yeah, but I would really like to have da 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 da. 
whether a new dress, whether whatever it might be. And it's like, well, the word says, take the light in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. That's right. Amen. And it's not just about your bare minimum. He says, if you take the light in him and you look to him with great expectation that he's going to take care of your needs, he's going to bless you beyond measure. Amen. Amen. And he does. Her book up. <laughs> yes, we haven't done that. Supernatural provision, Joan Hunter. You will be blessed reading this book, I'm telling you. I just... My I publisher, it's hard to put down. Yeah, my publisher included a CD with it. He says, I yes. want people to hear you talk about this. Yeah. And, you know, and, it's a, and they didn't up the price in the book or anything with the CD. They have actually seeded CDs into the book. I listened mm. to that CD. It's good. Because yeah, it's, it's really and, like and we had, you know, one of the ladies that worked here, she says, I just finished your book. I absolutely love the book. And she says, it, it gave me power over my finances. Because see, fear has power over your finances in the negative. Right. Faith has power over it in, the, in, in a positive way. She says, and it was like, it was just an empowering book that yes, God is going to bless my finances above and beyond my job here at the station. And, and if you look to your employer for the blessings of God and for bonuses and things like that, potentially you'll be disappointed. Yeah. But you look to God and God's going to go way beyond the natural. And he's going to bring in finances where you just don't expect it at all. I gave my first fruits offering at the beginning of this year. And, then, and I thought, well, this is great, you know, and it's a sacrificial gift. Some people vary on how, they, how much it is or what you should do on that. But that's between you and God, number one. Yeah. But I, just, I gave my first fruits offering. Within three days, it was multiplied five times. Praise now, it was a, a sacrificial gift. Within three days, I got a very unexpected check in the mail, and I was going, Woohoo! Thank you, Jesus. And then I got to tithe on it. Yes. Yeah. It was so awesome. And, uh, and, you know, the tithe was basically what is actually multiplied more than that because the tithe on it was, was, was within $53 of my um, uh, first fruits offering. Wow. Yeah, that That's was like awesome. really awesome. So it was closer to 10, 10 times just within three days. And that doesn't include what happened to the tithe and the offering off of the check that I got. And, and, and it's just like multiplying, absolutely multiplying. Wow. Mm. Your husband must sit in awe as he looks at your income. He stands in amazement in, in every area. And it's not money from the ministry. It's outside because I have multiple streams of income coming. I'm believing God to be a millionaire this year. And the reason being is because I believe that it's in his word. Number one. Number two, I've got a witty invention. Two of them are in the process right now of being developed. And when those get out, I will be a millionaire. And that's going to give me millions to give away. And that's what it's about. He's that's looking it, for gospel. people that he can trust. Sid Roth prophesied side as he wrote the foreword and that he says God was going to use this book for the transference of wealth in the end times wow. and from the wicked to the righteous. I'm righteous. You guys are righteous. Hallelujah. Bring it on. Hallelujah. And what God wants us to do is he wants us to be financial freedom. He wants us to have our mortgages paid off, our cars paid off, definitely credit cards at zero balance every month. You know, I'm not against using them, but pay them off every month. And, uh, you know, or use a debit card or something like that. And so, but God wants us supernaturally, financially free so that he can fund through us as Amen. individuals programs like this Amen. and networks that are going around the world. that are touching millions of people's lives every day. Amen. Well, I just wrote this down because I thought, boy, this is so good. <laughs> the key is to be more focused on God's promises. Amen. It is true. If you focus on the Word of God, that's going to bring the victory. When you focus on fearful things, that's not going to bring you any victory no. at all, is mm -mm. it? And focusing on it, but also vocalizing, yes. meaning I'll never have enough money. And you know what? You're right. You keep saying that you won't have enough money because the God who formed the earth with his word, our words will form our world of lack. So we need to speak as we seed into CTN. Father, I seed and I speak to that seed to go and grow. I'm seeding into the miraculous and I'm expecting a supernatural miraculous return on this. And watch what God does. That reminds me of in Job, decree a thing and it shall be established. Absolutely. We need to decree the word of God. Why? Because God says, 
I'm watching over my word to perform it. It will not return to me void. He says my words are active in their life. We don't realize that, that the word of God is active and it's alive. It has life in it. So when we speak his word over and into a situation, we can expect change and results and, and victory. And what's so awesome, in this book, I talk about decreeing the word, exactly what you were talking about. <clears throat> but in addition to decreeing it, seed it. Yes. Would you and talk about that a minute? I thought that so was so awesome good. It is so awesome what God, the revelation that God has given me where this is concerned. If you're Need. under if you're under attack, okay? And, and it's like, God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And and you just don't know what to do. And Isaiah 54:17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you have the power to condemn. Why not give $54.17? We have seen, since God gave me this revelation a couple years ago, we have seen court cases of the innocent people drop, 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 drop. Somebody was supposed to have an inheritance, and they said, no, you're not entitled to the inheritance. They see the $54.17 within a week got the millions of inheritance. It was absolutely phenomenal what God has been doing. Multiple different situations. You're having a grievance uh, on your job. Well, you know, somebody, like cause this happens a lot, especially if the people are jealous, that they'll start saying things about you that aren't true. Mm -hmm. So they see $54.17 and the, and the situation just totally settles. If you're believing God for a, a godly wife and uh, Psalm 31, donate $31 and <laughs> seed for a wife, even if you are married. And see, for a godly wife, you know, and, and if you're believing God to have uh, your children saved, you cannot buy salvation, understand that, but you can certainly seed for it. And, and Isaiah uh, 49, 25, but thus says the Lord, very important, but thus says the Lord, he who contends with you, I will contend with, which is a really good one to seed if somebody is attacking you, but it ends with, and I will save your children. Amen. One Psalm lady, 91. and and, it's, and, and for Isaiah 49, 25, I will save your children. So you seed 49, 25, you decree the word that God's going to save your children. You seed to add to the word of God, to multiply the word that has gone forth. And I, I had somebody that uh, sent me an email. They seeded 49, 25, December the 5th. Their son got saved December 31st. Wow. Had one other lady seed $49.25 with her sister on the phone, pushing sin together to another ministry. And at, for $49.25 for the her lady's five nephews, the other lady's five sons. And within five weeks, all five of them had come to the Lord. They'd gotten off drugs. They got together. They had Thanksgiving meal together for the first time in over five years. Uh -huh. It's absolutely phenomenal. I could go on and on with lots and lots of miracles. Where well, we're going to take a break I right know. now. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to hear some more of Greg's good music. And uh, he's coming music. back in just a moment. Stay with us. We've got a lot more with Joan Hunter. To contact Joan Hunter Ministries, please call area code 281 789 75 Zero, zero. You can also send an email to info at joanhunter.org. For more information about Joan's ministry and books, please log on to her website at www.joanhunter.org. like my Somebody story is what it sounds ago. like. <laughs> sounds like my story. I tell you what, I was broken and hurt, abused and all kinds of things through life. And God has healed me, body, mind, soul, spirit, finances. And it's like, well, you know, many times, you know, you mentioned, you know, that, that my parents were Charles or Francis Hunter. 
and uh, and it's like, well, you know, she ha she can't talk about finances because she's always had finances. Okay, <laughs> people a lot of times think that. And so uh, when I was born, uh, my father left me before I was born, actually. And so it left us stranded with basically no income. My mom started a business, and it takes time for money to come in. And she would work about 18 to 24 hours a day. You know, Mom, you could understand that yeah. one. And, uh, and so all that, and, and we would go to the garbage cans, and, and we would put my brother in the garbage can. He would dig out really nasty old fruit, take it home, and to carve out a bowl of fruit for us. So I understand what it's like to be without. And then uh, 10, 11, and 12 years ago, when I went through a really hard time in my life, and basically we lost our home, we lost uh, the family, we lost everything, and basically lost my life to breast cancer, of which God supernaturally healed me when he healed my heart. And that's another whole program, yes. and, uh, and a miraculous program. And, and, and I could have called my parents to ask for money, and they would have helped me. But God says, are you going to trust them, or are you going to trust me? It's time you grew up. Hmm. And so they never knew the trouble that I went through financially until they read it in my book, Healing the Heart of how God supernaturally supplied my every need. And so I stand at a point that, and, and I'm gonna use the word platform, I stand on a platform of saying, been there, done that, made it through, but God, there was no way I could make it through any of the things that I went through, but God. And now I have a car paid off. My husband's car is paid off. I've remarried about seven, eight years ago. My car is paid off, his car is paid off, our house is paid off. Supernaturally, God has met our every need. And, and it's so awesome what God is doing. And, and the thing is, I want to encourage all of you that are watching today, that if God can do it for me, God can do it for you. I just expected it. I really never thought I would ever have a car paid off. And my oldest daughter, Charity, she says, why don't you pay the car off? The, America makes it so easy in just little you know, little payments, right. but you end up and pay twice as much for the car. That's right. Or even more than that for the house because of the interest rates. Even though they're low, we end up and pay so much more. And I thought, okay, I never even thought about paying my car off. And within three months, the car was paid off. It was, it's a van. And I thought, this is like really amazing here. And so I thought, okay, um, now what about, you know, da da da, da and, I, and that's like, okay, paying your house off? Oh, like for real, you know, and this is somebody who was broke 10 years ago, basically had nothing, had to start my life over with three girls in college, you know, and everything else and, and totally devastated in every area of my life. And to start over, hadn't really officially started my own ministry. I was still traveling with my folks at the time and to go and have basically have no books, no nothing at that time and literally start from scratch thinking my life and ministry was over and how God supernaturally met my need to be at a point in 10 years, have a house paid off with four bedrooms, two and a half bath. It's very, very nice. I, I had a larger home with, with a little bit larger home with a lot more land. I thought, I don't need the land. I'm not there anyway. <laughs> so um, anyway, and so minorly downsized to a house where I could completely pay it off. And not even, let's see, have I made the house payment this month? I don't have to think about it because it's, it's done. And God wants us to walk in that freedom. And as he was saying about when I had no hope, when I had the pain, I had all this kind of stuff. It's like, you know, and some of you are hurting financially and you think there is no way. Trust me, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, there was no way in the natural, but God. Amen. Amen. And God wants to heal you, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. He wants to heal you in every area. He wants to have you be able to bless every good work, your church, the ministries and everything that's going on here. He wants you to be blessed in every area. One thing about the book, Supernatural Provision, I go and I talk about the hindering forces that can keep you from walking in supernatural financial blessing. I tell you what it is. I, I do the prayer, say this prayer with me. It's very, very elementary. I write my books very, very simply because I was told I was retarded and I would never be able to read when I was growing up. I think I'm doing pretty good. I have got a doctorate <laughs> degree, glory to God. Not I only read books, I write books, glory. <laughs> this is number eight. So, uh, and we got more coming out, which is a, a miracle. But God, yes. okay, but God. And my mom had a genius IQ. I missed that train, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm funny like her, so that's good. 
But but what happens is that has been programmed into my mind that I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'm retarded, I'll never be able to learn, never amount to anything, never, never, never. And it's like when I had to erase that junk out of my head, get rid of the never, get rid of those word curses, cut those words off in Jesus' name, I'll never get out of debt. I'll, all these things that we've been saying over ourselves. And what happened is revelation came that I'm not stupid, I'm not retarded. It didn't happen too long ago. Uh, I think I was 29 when it happened. And <clears throat> all these things that were going on involved in all of that. And when I realized that I wasn't stupid, this is what man said about me, not what God said about me. And man may say, you'll never, like the accountant told me, he says, you're never going to make it. Quit tithing, quit giving offerings, plan on filing bankruptcy. I cut those words off in Jesus' name. I've never not tithed since I got saved when I was 12. I've never, that I'm aware of not given an offering when God said to give an offering. And I have not gotten anywhere near a bankruptcy court, but I did change CPAs. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you didn't come into agreement with him. I did not. I cut the words off and, and re cut those words off. They would have no power over me. But see, people curse their finances with their words. Renounce those words. Cut those words off. Repent for any words that you've said. That's just the, the topic of, about speaking and confessing, so to speak, over positive things over your life, over your finances, over your children, over your spouse, etc. And then where, where that's concerned, cutting off, figuring out what kind of hindrances there are. Any hindering forces that's keeping blank from happening. And it, it doesn't have to do with finances. I prayed when I recorded the CD that's in there. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, any hindering forces that's keeping like you, I was praying for a group of people, you or your children from getting pregnant even. We cut those words off in Jesus' name and command those hindrances to be gone in Jesus' name. And I, I said my daughter's name under my breath. She got pregnant four days later. She had tried for almost three years to have a baby. And my granddaughter two now. So that's very fun. Really? Yes, yes. And she's such a sweetheart. But any hindering forces, like any hindering forces if you're a salesperson, any hindering forces that's keeping people to come in to buy a car from me, I command them to go. And Father, I ask you to bless them financially to come in here and give them the ability to buy a car from me. Watch your sales go up. Mm. Absolutely amazing. And it's the same thing with if you're selling houses. Everything. I know, you know, they say real estate is so bad and all this, and I know it's bad for a lot yeah. of people. But there are people selling houses today. Yes. That's and right. they stand on the Word of God and they remove all the hindering forces, and God sends them supernaturally sends them people. I and don't know how he does it. I know. We just pray over their finances, that they're going to have the funds to come and to buy the house, even let them buy the house with cash because there's a lot less closing costs. <laughs> I mean, all these things. And it pertains, this book is good. Yes, supernatural provision. Yes, you know, living in financial freedom. And But it's every area of your life. What is holding back blank from happening? And we need to break those hindering forces in every area. And it, and it talks about the three primary areas where financial blessing can be withheld and or reasons for them to be withheld. Number one, the key to break them is repentance. People don't like hearing this first part. Repent for any foolish spending. They don't like that one. They like to just have the money, run the credit cards up, and not worry about it. Well, you know what? You do that, and you then you get then you got a lot of stuff on your on your shoulders. Yeah. But repent for any foolish spending. Now, God wants to bless you with things. He says He'll give you the desires of your heart, but make sure that the money is there so that the desire can be paid for. Okay, repent for any time you haven't tithed at least ten percent in your life. Then repent for any time you haven't given an offering when God said to give an offering. Now, God may be moving on your heart today to give $111 for Deuteronomy 111, to give $49.25 for your child, to give $55.11 based on Isaiah 55.11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall accomplish whereto I send it, meaning I am seeding this for a new car. I'm seeding this for my house to paid off, be paid off. I'm seeding this, whatever is coming out of your mouth, whatever you are decreeing. And, uh, and, and, but as you seed, then God will bless that. If somebody tells you, you have to give a thousand dollars today and you don't, that's not sin. But when God tells you to give a thousand dollars and you don't, that's when it's sin. 
Right. Not when man mm -hmm. says to do it, but when God says to do it. And there's power in obedience. You know, Deuteronomy 28, one third of the chapter talks about the blessings of God in obedience. The last two thirds are the curses of disobedience. Mm -hmm. There's such a stronger side and effect on people of disobedience and people need to hear that what can happen to you if you don't obey. But God wants to bless you. He wants to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we can't contain. That means that all of our bank accounts are full and all of our tithing records have gone on to the several other pages. Okay, all these areas, God wants to bless us. God wants to be a ri us to be a river of finances, not just a reservoir. And a reservoir just to store up inside. Now I'm all for savings account. I have a savings account. I have an investment account. I have a retirement account and I have a checking account. Okay, so I have all of the above. And I think it's very important that we do. But I also am a radical giver. And then as the more I give, the more just better interest rates, better this, better that. And God just multiplying my investment account in the natural where it's impossible in the natural. Mm -hmm. And which is awesome. But see, we need to be a river of finances. And on the side of all the rivers that we see all over Florida, all over the United States, on the side of the river, what is it? It's banks. <laughs> and the banks are full too. So God wants us to be a river of finances, yet our banks to be full, because all of a sudden you may need an extra $3 million. And so in the banks of the believers is extra millions of dollars saved up for such a time as this. And to be able to write out a check for a million, two million, three million. How awesome is that? Mm. That is awesome. I'm gonna stay close to you. Good. I yeah. love that. <laughs> blessed to be a blessing. Yes, I'm to blessed be to be a blessing. To give. Amen. If you if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. And and uh, Sid Ross said on there he, in in the forward, he says this message is contagious. <laughs> Absolutely contagious. It is. He just bought a brand new building with cash, in another city. He's moving from Georgia to North Carolina. Fabulous new building. All set up. His own television studio and everything. All with cash. Wow. And see, and that's what it's about. Right. It's like getting the message, understanding, this is great for Joan. This is great for Bob and Jane. This is great for Sid Roth. But what about me? I'm standing here telling you, or sitting here actually, telling you today, if God can do this for me, he can. And he so wants to do it for you. There's no difference except for maybe I'm expecting it and I'm not expecting it to have more money to hoard it up. I'm expecting it so I can give more. You know, I even take my checkbook on the road with me so I can, you know, send the seeds in it even as I'm going here and there, That's you right. know, which is awesome. But because it, I can't even keep up with the finances that I'm being blessed with. That I mean, it's wonderful. hard keeping up with the tithe. Well, yeah, think it's about, just awesome. Think about Cornelius. Cornelius was a giver and he gave to the poor. And look what happened in his life. Cornelius came to the Lord. He's the first Gentile in his family to come to the Lord. And Dorcas was one that made clothes for the poor. And God raised her from the dead. I mean, there are just so many stories about those that lend. It's like if you lend to the poor, it's like lending to the Lord himself. Amen. So this is all of it. So we can be blessed to be a blessing. So we can give abundantly. And one thing that's really neat is I've had outreaches to Haiti. And I went down there the first time right after the earthquake, cursed the spirit of trauma off of them and fear and broke the spirit of poverty and the poverty mindset. And we weren't, we re, you know, weren't going to receive an offering or all, anything like that. And all of a sudden I'm teaching on this. I said, when you go to church next time, give something. Pencil, we gave, we gave them pencils that day to write and take notes. And I said, give your pencil at church, give a shoelace, give something because it had nothing. And so long story short is that they would, uh, I said, you go to church this next Sunday and you give, these were pastors. I said, you put something in the plate. All of a sudden they started just running up to the front, putting things at my feet, you know, uh, shoelaces and, and pens and pencils and coins and so forth and so on. We gave it to the orphanage there. But on the way back, they were getting phone calls about jobs. The president of Haiti is a Christian and I've anointed his entire, um, last time I was there, anointed his entire cabinet and I'm going to anoint him when I'm there this next time. And, but I prayed over them that one of those pastors in that meeting writes 
gets his, his speeches. It's the second highest paying job in Haiti. They're starting companies. We sell t-shirts that say miracles happen for the ministry. Miracles happen is the name is it what it says on the t-shirt. They're made in Haiti by a pastor who came to my meeting, got the idea we can do t-shirts here in Haiti. And wow. then, then I said, I'm, I'm taking all this plastic back to the United States because they had no place to even handle the trash. They said, we need to have a recycling plant. They have a recycling plant. They're paying the Haitians to bring bottles. The Haitians are getting money. They're making money off the plant. But you know what? Haiti is getting cleaned up. Amen. Praise it's God. awesome. And, and I told them when I was down there, I said, the Word of God works, Philippians 419 works in Haiti like it does in America. That's right. But you know what? It works in America just like it does in Haiti. Mm -hmm. That's right. People need to get that revelation. Yeah. Amen. And they're building a church, rebuilding it, totally paid free, you know, totally paid for, uh, holds 3,000 people out of donations over and above tithes and offerings. They're averaging over a thousand U.S. dollars a week. Wow. That's in Haiti. In That's Haiti. Amazing. It is awesome. <laughs> oh. It's a miracle. Yes. Well, we've got a lot of stories about Haiti. And other places That's right. that are doing this. Well, let's get some more music. Craig is coming back to sing, and we'll be right back with Joan Hunter. Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. The Christian Television Network has been committed to not only sharing the gospel over the airwaves, but to helping those in need during tough times. CTN is able to take Christ's message into many places where few want to go. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Celebrate the harvest with CTN. Yes, well, through it all, we've learned to trust in Jesus. That's he right. is the only one you can really put your trust in. That's right. You know, I could put my trust in Joan Hunter and what she says and, and all that, but she just might fail. But Jesus, he never fails. That's right. Oh, that's why I love him. I'm human. That's right. <laughs> so, and, and what's so awesome is that God is a never failing God. Yes. You know, he is omnipotent. He is sin free. And his desire is to bless us, to bless us beyond words. Um, you think, well, you know, I, I just don't think that God wants to bless me. God says, I want to bless you. Who's right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who's right on that one? You're thinking? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're thinking or his thinking. We need to get kingdom thinking. That's right. And it's like, instead of, I don't have enough money for this, and just say, you know, I, I don't have enough money to buy you, like to children, don't have any money to buy you shoes. Just say that we'll get the shoes later. Yeah. Power of your words and how you're saying things. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's giving a very bad impression to the children, but it's also speaking those words into existence. And, uh, and so it's very important that we start changing what's coming out of our mouth. And what God wants to do is see, he wants our finances to be blessed. So we take the checkbook and Father, we just speak to that checkbook to go and grow. We say this mountain of debt, be thou cast into the sea or the ocean and uh, be, be cast into the sea and be remembered no more. We've had people that as a result of this particular book and CD in the back that their mortgages have been canceled. One lady seated, um, $55.11 and she says, I'm believing to be able to be financially free so I can travel and do more for God. And that was on a Friday night, Saturday, Saturday, the mortgage holder called her and said that her mortgage has been canceled. No. Was, oh yeah, it was so awesome. And then a worldwide bank called somebody else and had, they had a second mortgage of $100,000 and they just called it canceled in Jesus name. People are getting a hold of the message that God wants them set free financially. 
So I'm believing, you know, I mean, it's okay. The bank's called and says, okay, here's a car. You can do this. You can do that. And, and debt's canceled. And, you know, because the word says that this is a year for the debts to be canceled. So whatever debt that you're in, that in, in Jesus' name, those debts are to be canceled. Canceled means that there, there is a zero balance, whether you pay them off or they literally wipe them out. We had one lady that was believing God for a house, and she says, I'm just going to seed for a house. You know, I'm believing for a house. Well, they called 15 people in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and they called 15 people and says, here, we want to give you a key. One of the 15 will work on a house. Well, 14 others didn't, but hers did. Really? It, and it was over $250,000 home in Lincoln, Nebraska. And how God has blessed her is absolutely incredible. Now, another one is um, Isaiah 45.3, uh, the treasures of heaven, that the treasures of heaven would be revealed. And I talked about that with the secrets of heaven, basically. Some people are seeding $45.30 for the secret finances to be revealed. One lady, she says, I must believe if I have any secret finances, then I'm going to have them it just, you know, exposed to bless me financially. I did that actually a, a couple of months ago. And then I got an email. Somebody had been trying to get a hold of me for six months to give me a royalty on my books in Japan, in Japanese. I'm like, glory to God. You know, it works for me too. And then the lady, she says, I'm a, any finances, Father, I just seed $54.30. And, and so she seeded $54.30. And, and her son calls her up. Now, can you imagine if either one of your children called you up and says, have you checked your water meter today? Like, no, hi, no, I love you. How you doing? <laughs> have you checked your water meter today? I'm like, no. And, and he says, you need to go check it. Well, he came over and actually checked her water meter. Come to find out they've been charging her several hundred dollars a month over and above what she was actually using. Got a check for $2,500 back. Wow. Another guy seated and he says, okay, I'm believing God to have my car paid off. He seated a particular amount, you know, for I think it was $111 for his car to be paid off. Somebody at work says, did you ever get that thing taken care of uh, with, with, you know, your income and you, you change insurances and you pay a little less now? Did you ever get that money? And he's like, I don't know. Come to find out he didn't. Got, he needed $2,500 to pay his car off. You know how much they gave him? $2,500. Nah. I mean, and it was money that had been promised to him. And another guy, we were, I was recently in England, making a long story short, he found, I was, we were walking back in and he saw that I had, one of my daughters had a book, uh, had my name on And he just became, you know, I thought I was going to hyperventilate. I didn't know what was, he was going to do. And long story short, he had just seen me in England on Sid Roth about this book. And that morning, at, this was a Sunday, that morning, he and his wife gave 45 pounds, 30 pence, which is about 70 of our dollars, and gave that in the offering that morning because his wife had a company on the internet and they had it listed for three months, not one hit, not one bid, nothing, zero in months. Put that in the offering, here's her cell phone on the Blackberry, by her chair at the church and it's ringing off and everybody is bidding on her jewelry and in just a matter of moments of the, the offering plate had just been passed and then three or four hours later I walk into the hotel and he is like blown away so I gave him a copy of the book and he was <laughs> and then he gave us a copy of his test you know did actually a video to his testimony of what God did and how God had just supernaturally blessed it there is power in his word Amen. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I send the word of healing. I speak supernatural faith for supernatural provision. Yes. Father, we speak health and wholeness to the finances of those that are listening, all hindering forces that are keeping finances from coming in. Father, right now, we speak it released. We speak the windows of heaven open. We thank you for witty inventions. We thank you for finances pouring into CTN right now in Jesus' name, not only as a seed, but then secondary the second time as an offering of thanksgiving from the revelation that they received here today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Amen. <laughs> I believe it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I believe that... God really wants to give us things, not, not just to give us things, but he wants to give us those things we need.
That's right. And it's mainly to propagate the gospel. Yes. That's, That's right. why he wants to give to us. And, uh, and that he loves us. Yes, and he does. Because you love spoiling her with things, too. <laughs> well, I do. Yes, but, that's God's heart. Oh, he I loves know. spoiling us with things. He does. And he has an unlimited supply. That's right. He does. He has everything that we need. And we need to believe that today. That's right. And there are other structures that you've got to do. You've got to tithe. You have got to say, God, I'm going to start tithing. Yeah. I am amazed at the people in the churches that won't tithe or they think they can't tithe. Or they can't afford it. Yeah, they, oh, well, I just can't afford that. But you can tithe. You can give up something else. If you have to give up food for a week, do it. <laughs> or coffee. Yeah, or coffee. Starbucks. And say, ah, it's going to my tithe. You can tithe. And it really is the key that opens up everything Amen. to Amen. you. You must tithe. And that's okay. just the very little bit. Just tithe. And then God will open other secrets to you. Amen. I, I want to invite you to come to know Jesus. That's the most important thing you'll ever do. Amen. That's right, honey. You hear all about the way God blesses, but the first thing is you've got to surrender to Him, Amen. to Jesus Christ, our King. The Lord of Lords, surrender to Him. Say, Father, forgive me and make me over anew. I need to be born again. Yeah. I thank you, Father. Oh, don't we thank Him all? Amen. Don't we Amen. thank Him, each and every one of us? Amen. Thank Him for His great salvation.